hello everyone this is Aruhi and welcome to my channel so guys in this video I'll show you how we can use DenseNet 121 on our custom data set so guys in my previous video I've explained to you the DenseNet architecture in detail I've explained each and everything about this architecture in that video so if you want to go through the architecture first then link is given in description section you can check it from there today I'm starting with the implementation and I'll use the custom data set for it so uh, guys this is the architecture we have right input input will go to the first convolutional layer where we have a filter size of 7x7 7 7 and stride 2 and after that we have pooling layer with a size 3x3 3 3 with stride 2 and these green ones are a dense block so we have four dense blocks and in dense block 121 first dense block have six such layers dense block 2 have 12 such layers and dense block 3 have 24 these convolutional layers and dense block 4 have 16 such convolutional layers and we have transition layer after these dense block over here here and here and finally we have this global average pool uh, with a filter size of 7 by 7 and we have a fully connected layer and softmax function and we'll get the output over here now let me show you the data for data set first which i'm using right and then we'll come back to this code again okay so this data set folder is containing my data set inside that i have four folders so basically i want to build an image classification model using densenet 121 which can classify these four classes so suppose if we are giving an image to our algorithm and our algorithm will give us output that whether the given image is uh, belongs to this aeroplane class car flower or motorbike and every folder have a uh, related images again car folder have the related images and flower folder have flowers images and then motorbike folder have those images okay so you can prepare your custom data set like this create a data set folder under that create the folder for each class you'll create a separate folder and the label name should be the folder name okay this is how you can create your data set now once you have your data set now we have four classes all right now after that over here i'm importing all the required modules and after that this is a function densenet 121 model okay this function is having our model code and this this is the code these layers this code is there written in this densenet 121 model image rows means the width of images image calls means height of images color type is one how many dense blocks are there four right so this dense net have different variants and in each variant type we have four dense blocks but in those dense blocks there are different number of layers right so i've shown you like in dense net 121 these are the four dense block and these are the number of layers in each block okay these convolutional layers vary in each dense block so this is the architecture we have written here growth rate 32 so in dense state 121 architecture the growth rate which they have used is 32 that means each convolutional layer can uh, this produce 32 feature maps so we have fixed right so we will be having the feature maps we will concatenate the feature map all the previous feature maps with will get concatenated with the current uh, convolutional layer feature map which can only generate 32 feature map okay and the number of filters are 64 as per the paper right and the other things I've mentioned here now over here first of all we are writing the size of image so you can manually also write for example you want to have a input image of size 224 into 224 into 3 you can write 224 224 and 3 over here because if you are working on a colored image you will write 3 over here right and then number of filters 64 as per the architecture we are using it now these four things over here in a list nb layer 6 12 24 and 16 so these are the number of convolutional layers we are using in dense block first dense block will have 6 layers second dense block will have 12 layer 
third will have 24 layer and fourth dense block will have 16 convolutional layer you can see here 6 12 24 and 16 okay so after that now we are starting with the initial code firstly we have a fil uh, convolutional layer with a filter size of this you can see here convolutional layer with a filter size of 7 by 7 with stride 2 okay and then we have a pool now let's see pooling layer after convolutional layer we have a batch normalization scale and activation function here we have a pooling layer pooling layer of size filter size 3 by 3 and we are using a stride 2 so how much work we have done we have written a code for these two things now we'll write a code for blocks dense blocks and transition layers okay so over here see we are using a loop because we have dense blocks and transition layer will uh, run a loop there okay and you can see here this dense block and transition blocks these are the separate functions which we have created so let's understand those functions first and then we'll come here again okay dense block function and transition block function so we have written those functions over here okay see transition block and dense block okay i'll show you what is there in these two blocks and guys if you remember from my previous class i have told you that in dense net architecture whenever you are using a convolutional layer you will use a convolutional layer like this means firstly you'll use batch normalization and then use ReLU. After that, you will use a convolutional layer with a filter size of 3 by 3 and then you will use a dropout. So whenever you are using a convolutional layer, you will use all these things. Okay. So we have created a separate function with the name of conblock. Wherever we are using a convolutional layer, we will call this function conblock. Okay. So what we are doing? Batch normalization. See, batch normalization activation function ReLU and then we have a convolutional layer okay so now guys remember in this dense block we have a convolutional layer one by one and then we have a convolutional layer three by three so for convolutional layer one by one also you will use batch normalization ReLU and dropout and for convolutional layer where we have a filter size of three by three here also you will use batch normalization, activation function, then convolutional layer and then dropout. The dropout is optional. Okay. So that's what we are doing here. So the convolutional layer with the filter size of one by one and this dropout is option. If you are using dropout, then this will happen. Now we have a convolutional layer three by three for that also you will use batch normalization ReLU then convolutional layer and then dropout so you can see batch normalization activation padding we are using okay and then we are using convolutional layer with a size of three by three okay again if you are using dropout then it will work so this function is a con block we have created this uh, function and we will use it wherever we want to use the convolutional layer because we have mentioned all these things over here batch normalization and activation function then convolutional layer and then drop out. okay now let's talk about transition block now just see the transition block whenever we want to use a transition block these are the different steps we have to follow how we are using a transition block what all things are there in a transition block batch normalization then we'll have a relu function after that we'll use a convolutional layer with a size one by one then drop out and then we are using a pooling layer with the size of uh, this filter size of two by two okay this thing we are implementing in a transition layer so let's see that batch normalization activation function convolutional layer with a filter size of one by one and this dropout is option so optional if you are using dropout then it will work and then we have using a average pooling layer with a filter size of 2 by 2 and stride 2 by 2 so this is our transition block so we have written a code for transition block now now the code is for dense block now let me show you the dense block so remember guys they we have four dense blocks and every dense block have convolutional layer 1 into 1 and 3 into 3 
but the first block will have six times those layers second block will have 12 time and then third block 24 time and fourth block will have 16 such convolutional layers okay so now we are writing a function for it so these are the important parameters right growth rate is required because uh, growth rate is telling us how many new feature maps will be created by each convolutional layer okay dropout is none right now and now let's see okay so we are using a loop and in that loop we are this merge will concatenate what is happening in con this dense block then inside a dense block we have convolutional layers and we are concatenating the feature maps of all the convolutional layers which are present in one dense block right so for that we are using for concatenation we are using this merge right and this growth rate will tell like how many uh, how many new feature maps to add right so for example if you are working on a third convolutional layer third convolutional layer will generate 32 feature maps and the 32 32 feature maps from the previous two layers 32 feature map from the first convolutional layer 32 feature map from the second convolutional layer will also get concatenated with the 32 feature maps which are created by the third convolutional layer so this is how it works so we have written the code for dense block now let's understand the main function which is responsible here we have written the model code okay so till now i have explained you over here we are using dense block and transition block in a loop and after that you'll see a dense block after the loop also this is the final dense block this one fourth dense block okay so this is the fourth dense block and after that we are using batch normalization and activation and this is the uh, global average pool layer right so you can see all the things dense layer activation function is softmax right so these are the last video activation function in the global pool layer okay now in this model variable we are creating a model like this we are compiling the model over here and then we are returning a model now this function densenet 121 underscore model is a function when you'll call this function your we will um, this function is having a code for whole densenet 121 architecture now let's see how to use it on a data set okay so guys we are creating our load data function this load data function will be responsible to load the data inside a algorithm okay so load data function here i'm creating a two blank list this data list uh, will store all the images and this label list will store all the labels of the corresponding images okay and then data set is my folder name from that folder i'm reading all the images and guys i'm resizing my images to 224 into 224 because the input which will provide to our network will be 224 into 224 into 3 right so i'm resizing the images converting the images into array and after that after converting the images resizing the images i'm appending the data list and the label list with the resized images will go in data um, uh, list and labels will go in the labels list okay and after that for the labels now our labels are let's see here labels are aeroplane this uh, car flower and motorbike so these are strings algorithm will not understand this so we have to convert them into numbers so for that i am using this label binarizer ck uh, right so this label binarizer will convert the strings into numbers okay and then over here these are the four variables i'm using and i'm splitting the data into train test split now we have x train y train x test and y test uh, from this load data function okay now let's run the training so here you can see image rows and image calls we are telling that uh, height and width of the image is this channel 3 means colored images number of classes 4 this you will change as per your data set if you have diff 5 
डिफरेंट क्लासेस यू राइट दैट बैच साइज इज सिक्सटीन एंड नंबर ऑफ इक पॉक्स टेन आई एम जस्ट रनिंग दिस कोड फॉर टेन इ पॉक्स यू कैन इंक्रीज एज पर योर रिक्वायरमेंट राइट नाउ यू कैन सी आई एम यूजिंग दैट लोड डेटा फंक्शन ओवर हेयर एंड दैट फंक्शन विल गिव डेटा टू दीज फोर वेरिएबल्स over here in next line i'm calling that dense state 121 model function remember the function which we have created above right and we are calling that function and then this is the checkpoint and we are training the model over here right so you can see we are training the model for 10 epochs and after 10th epoch we are getting 64 percent accuracy accuracy is not good because i have trained my model only for 10 epochs right and after that i'm plotting the accuracies and loss plots you can see blue one is our training accuracy and blue one is a uh, sorry red one is a validation accuracy and in the same way you can see the loss also right so uh, now guys i'm showing you this code will show you few images okay you can see here okay first of all over here i want to show you on a test data a test we have 832 images in our test data and out of those 832 images 535 images were correctly predicted and 297 images were wrongly predicted now with this next block of code i'm showing you few images uh, where our predictions and ground truth boxes are similar predicted label and our truth label so true label is also flower and our algorithm predicted flower in the same way for these okay I'm sh I'm showing you nine images. Now I'll show you few images where predictions were wrong. So why I'm showing you? Uh, after watching this, you can analyze what kind of images our algorithm is understanding better, and what kind of images are there which our algorithm is facing problem in understanding. Right? You can analyze such things with it. So now with this block of code, you can see. Uh, truth label a uh, true label is airplane but our algorithm predicted it as flower okay in the same way predicted label is car but this true label is motorbike so these were the few algo uh, images which were wrongly predicted so guys this is how you can use densenet 121 on your custom data set so i'm giving this uh, in github link in the description section you can try this code uh, yourself right i hope this video is helpful thank you for watching